Hello there and welcome to another video. Now in this video what I want to have a look at is gravity, density and buoyancy. In particular I want to look at the relationship between gravity and buoyancy, the tendency of, um, light, of light things to float in water or in a liquid. So first of all, I've got quite a few things I want to get through so I just want to crack on with this. The first thing I want to talk about is mass. That's the first concept we want to worry about. Now, so what is mass? Now, mass is actually a measure of a few different things. The first thing it's a measure of is how much matter there is. Okay, so it's just a matter of of how much there is of something, how much matter you have. Um. Now, related to that, there's also the concept of density. Now, density is just a measure of how much mass you have in a given volume. So, say for example, say you have um, a certain amount of mass and it's in a volume V. Now, suppose you have a different volume, say it's something that's got twice the volume, but it's got the same amount of mass, then this has got double the density that this does because you've got the same amount of mass crammed into half the volume. So that means you've got twice the density there. And similarly, if we kept the volume the same, but we double the mass, this will have double the density that this has got because you've got twice the amount of matter crammed into the same amount of space you've got there. So this has got twice the density that this has got. Right, now, next thing we want to talk about is a very crucial concept called force. Now, we can admit force is really just a measure of how much you're changing the way something is moving. Either you're speeding it up or you're slowing it down, or you're changing the direction it's moving in. And we can measure how much force we're exerting on something with something called a Newton balance. Now, suppose we've got a mass of one kilogram, like this, and you've got you've this thing called a Newton balance attached to it. So you're pulling this way, like that, and there's a little line that, that will sort of move down to somewhere. This wasn't, it measures one newton. So you're pulling this mass here of one kilogram with a force of one newton. Now we'll assume we're in either a, a weightless environment or that this is moving on a completely frictionless surface. It doesn't really matter. There's only, there are no other forces wor at work. I'll, at least in the direction that you're pulling in. Okay? So either it's completely weightless or it's on a frictionless surface. Now what will happen is this will start to accelerate at a rate of one meters meter per second per second. So basically what that means is if you started from rest and you started to pull with one newton, one second later it would be moving at a rate of one meter per second. So that's the definition of a Newton. Now, if I'll drop this thing, so I've got a bit of space. If I was to attach another Newton balance on the other side, like this, and this one was pulling with a force of one Newton, like that then these two forces would cancel out and there'd be no acceleration. So forces can cancel each other out. So if something's not accelerating, either there's no forces acting on it at all or the forces acting on it are completely balanced. Now, if... Let's get rid of that again. So suppose I just go back to this situation here where you've got an unbalanced force acting on this mass here. If I was to double the force, it was two newtons, I double the acceleration, it become two meters per second per second. If I was to double the mass, I would half the acceleration. 
So acceleration is proportional to the force acting on it and it's inversely proportional to the mass, which means if you double the mass, you half, you half the acceleration. So mass is also a measure of something else. It's not just a measure of how much you have of something. It's also a measure of how reluctant something is to be accelerated or to have its motion changed. Now this concept is called inertia. So mass is how much matter there is, but it's also a measure of inertia, which is the reluctance of something to either uh, be made to speed up or be made to slow down or to have the direction it's moving in changed. All of these require force and how hard it is to change either a, an object's speed or its direction is a measure of its, is its inertia. That's a measure of how reluctant it is to be have anything changed about the way it's moving. Uh, there's something else that matters that matter also determines. If I had a Newton balance like this and I was holding it vertically and move it a wee bit and there was a force hanging down here sorry not a force there was a mass hanging down here like this then the Newton balance will measure a force now, notice that that's physically the same as this situation here of me pulling the object. Except, when I'm doing that, it's not accelerating. So it's kind of like, I'll drop back in again, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like with the Newton balance pulling on the other side. There's no, there's no, next, there's no acceleration because there's no force, overall force. So, if this mass is being pulled down. I'm, I'm measuring a force pulling up the way. It's not accelerating. So there must be a force pulling it down the way, like this. And we call that force the force of gravity. And that's experimentally verifiable. If I was to have another Newton balance, but this time, if I hang um, something that's got twice the mass of this, then the force there that it's registering would be twice the force here. So there's a force pulling this down this way. There'll be twice the force pulling that there. Now this is just a simple empirical um, information, you can do this experiment for yourself. If you hang something, hold something up with a Newton balance, the force that, is being, that's been, that the object is being pulled towards the ground is determined by its mass. And if you get twice the mass, you get twice the force pulling it down. So there is a force pulling things towards the ground, you can measure it. It's physically the same as the force here, it's just a force. Now, the force doesn't, de doesn't depend on the density of the object, it doesn't depend on its volume, it doesn't depend on the shape. It only depends on one thing, the mass, how much matter there is. Now because, well I'll fill up here, I'll fill in this bit here. So mass is how much matter there is, it's also a measure of the inertia and it's also a measure of gravitational, or it's a measure of how much gravitational force something will be pulled towards the ground. So it's got this three in one um, kind of idea with mass. It's a three in one concept. It's a measure of three different things. Now because it's a measure of both inertia and gravitational force, the upshot of that is something quite interesting. So supposing I've got these two masses again. So you've got the, the mass of m and you've got a mass of 2m, like this. Now we know if we from attaching Newton balances to these objects that there's a force acting on them, pulling them down. So there's a force acting on that one, and there's a force acting on that one. Twice the force is acting on this one as on this one. Because the force pulling it down is proportional to the mass. But mass is also a measure of inertia, how reluctant something is to be accelerated. So it's a measure of how much, 
how hard the earth is pulling something down, but it's also a measure of how much the object is resisting being pulled down. And these two things balance out perfectly. And both objects will accelerate at 9.8 metres per second per second. Because the mass determines both the gravitational force that's pulling it towards the ground and it also determines the inertia, the reluctance of the object to be accelerated. Like I said, these cancel out and this is why you get objects falling to the ground with the same acceleration. Now if you do this in a vacuum, if you have a series of objects in a vacuum, they will all fall with exactly the same acceleration. It doesn't matter what their mass is, it doesn't matter what their volume is, it doesn't matter what their density is. They will all fall with exactly the same acceleration because mass determines both the force it's been pulled down with and its inertia. The force is determined by the mass alone, it's not determined by density or volume or anything else.